I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the days before kindergarten started and children began their journey of education with grade one, there was a teacher whose name was Nanny Arbuckle. Nanny loved her pupils into learning and she taught them the joy of school. In a way though, she taught them too well. Their attachment to her left them terribly fearful of facing grade two. Imagine their surprise when the school administration called and informed their parents that they would be entering a new class in the fall, a challenge they had not imagined and for which they felt unprepared. Many panicked when they realized that Nanny would not be their teacher forever and that they would have to move up to a new class. Of course, Nanny and the pupils' parents reassured them. The students were promoted to the next grade and it all worked out. The experience, though, gives us a, a tiny glimmer of understanding, perhaps even a sense of what Jeremiah might have felt as a young man when he was called by the Lord to be a prophet to the nations. Just imagine poor Jeremiah minding his own business when suddenly God comes barging into his life, calling him to take action, calling him to be God's prophet, to speak God's word to his people. And he was not called to be just any old prophet. God would set him over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. Jeremiah resisted. He was reluctant to obey this call, much like Moses, Noah, Jonah, just to name a few. But God wouldn't take a simple no or any kind of a no. So they engaged in little dialogue. God said, I picked you out. Even before you were born, I chose you to be my prophet. And Jeremiah replies, oh no, I don't even know how to speak. I'm only a youth. And God counters, don't say that. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go and whatever I command, you shall speak. And Jeremiah begged to be released out of fear, but God assures him, be not afraid for I am with you to deliver you. And then Jeremiah is speechless. But he must have continued to indicate his resistance to God's call because finally he says, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I've put my words in your mouth. This dialogue, this going back and forth between Jeremiah and God was critical for Jeremiah's decision in a similar way to that of many other leaders in the Old Testament. I mean, do you ever wonder why God in biblical times seems to have continually chosen the most unwilling characters to do his will? Why would God have enlisted so young and inexperienced a person as Jeremiah for so awesome a task? I mean, one obvious answer is that God calls people for qualities other than gifted speech. We can be certain that Jeremiah's success rested not within himself, but on God's word and God's strength as God promised this reluctant prophet. Eventually, as we learn from the latter chapters of the book of Jeremiah, all the power and the success of Jeremiah's life resulted from his new relationship with God. As his dialogue with God continues, as God teaches him what to tell the people in God's name, 
God empowers Jeremiah with the strength and the courage to do the work that he's given him to do. So Jeremiah was able to move ahead into the new day because he learned to trust God. God said that despite whatever hesitations Jeremiah might have felt, he absolutely wanted him to be a prophet and would support and sustain him. God would love Jeremiah as would no other. Now, this is all really wonderful, but it's not the end of today's sermon. So don't get your hopes up yet. We don't get off that lately. We don't get the comfort of just learning about God's dialogue with Jeremiah. God didn't limit to ancient times the blowing of God's spirit among his people. God's spirit moves among us today as well. So we are wise to ask, are we too sought out and called by God as Jeremiah was? If we're honest, we have to acknowledge and confess our own reluctance to willingly give ourselves to God's call. I still remember receiving my call to ordain ministry from God in second year university while washing dishes at my kitchen sink. I was so scared. I just wanted to ignore it and run the other way. I had a list as long as my arm as to why I shouldn't say yes to God. And we can always find a reason not to continue the journey of faith to which God is calling us. We, we always, I mean, we've got lots of excuses. We think to ourselves, I'm too old or I'm too young. I don't speak well. I'm not intelligent enough. I'm too busy. There's no way I can possibly do that. It must not really be God calling. And I can serve, but not now, maybe later. However, if we are willing to engage in a dialogue with God and willing to continue that dialogue with him, we might see something else. We might see evidence of God's spirit breathing something new into our lives. The key to Jeremiah's moving beyond his fear lies in continuing that dialogue. And this is true for us too. If we only have a monologue, all we're doing is speaking and listening, listening mostly to our own ignorance of life's greater callings and our limited vision of what challenges God may have in store for us in God's kingdom. But like Jeremiah, we are called to continue the dialogue. We're called into a relationship with God that is just as challenging as Jeremiah's. I mean, yes, it is good to study the scriptures and to learn all that we can about Jesus' life and the very word of God. That's paramount. But out of that, we're called to grow as disciples. As disciples, we help others around us grow in their relationship with God. In discipleship, we carry out God's work as his hands and his feet in the community around us. And what does that look like? Maybe for us it looks like joining that challenging conversation around anti-racism. Maybe it looks like finding ways to house and clothe and feed the poor. Maybe it looks like helping local children in our community with their homework. Or giving support to those, even within our own parish, who care for the elderly and the ill. God tells us first, as God did the prophet of old, that God will be with us. That God will sustain us. That God will love us like no other. Even when things are difficult. Even when we hear the things we witnessed in our gospel today. 
Even in times such as these, we can depend on God's support and guidance and strength because we know that he'll sustain us for the task. Through our baptism, God calls us to serve the world, to love and nurture what is good, to mend and help transform through God's power what is weak or distorted. We're each called into God's household to confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share in his eternal priesthood. And some of us will recall, we will respond to God's call eagerly. Maybe others less so. Each of us is likely to be somewhat reluctant, at least at first, like Jeremiah. But if we engage in that dialogue with God, we can learn to respond with eventual open hearts as Jeremiah did, because we too are assured that the God who calls us remains with us forever and will sustain us. The living God in whose name we are baptized continually speaks to us through the church, through the scriptures, the sacraments, through our prayers, through the voice of the Holy Spirit, God speaks to us at unexpected moments. Through the created world around us, through the hands and voices of other people, even in the silences of trials and unanswered prayers and difficult people. The God who has called us is always with us speaking, if we will listen and we will accept it. God who is always there for us will give us his support, his love, and his nourishment. The same grace that once inspired Jeremiah. So may we have willing hearts to hear when he calls. Amen.